Okay, this is our last episode where we're doing the comparison between the Kubota BX2680, the John Deere 1025R. We're gonna compare a few more features that we've kind of missed in some other episodes. And then we're gonna talk about just either some of our opinions or just some of the thoughts we've had as we've gone through this series. And I think Christy will join me for that part and we'll be able to discuss that a little bit further. So stick around for that. I wanna talk a little bit about the gauges, uh, specifically the fuel gauge. On the John Deere, it's right down here directly into the fuel tank. Clearly a very cost-effective approach. They can just put it right in the tank. No wiring, no extension, nothing necessary. And that makes it not quite as easy to deal with. It has got a little bit more accurate over the years. Uh, they have spaced the, the gauges so that you can tell a little bit more accurately what's left in the tank but it's not as nice a gauge as what you will see on the BX. The BX has the fuel gauge up in the dash where it would naturally seem like it ought to be. There was some discussion either in comments or maybe in some private discussion I was having. Uh, a BX owner felt like that the deer did not have a backlit display. Uh, my 2018 does indeed have a backlit display, uh, backlit very similarly to the BX such that when you turn the lights on, the backlighting dims a little bit. Uh, so it seems very similar there. On the BX, all the U-joints under the tractor are sealed. There are no grease fittings that I could find uh, that need to be greased on a regular basis, or I couldn't find any at all except for on the mower deck and where you would expect there. Contrast that with the deer. There are six grease fittings that have to be greased. Yep, that's me, greased. We don't grease here, we grease. That's the way I've always done it. But one of those fittings especially is very difficult to get to. Uh, I've got video showing all six of those fittings, uh, showing how to grease or grease them. And go take a look at that, you'll see what that's like, but it's definitely more complex than the maintenance on the BX for the corresponding items because they're sealed bearings. Is there an advantage or a disadvantage? I'm gonna leave that to you guys. I really like the idea of not needing to grease those U-joints, but I don't know if anyone's had trouble with the longevity of the sealed U-joints or you know why they would choose one versus the other. So again, I'll just leave that to you, the viewers. You can leave your comments below. It's always interesting to hear. Now there's some interesting differences in how the engine is laid out. It's really reverse in the BX to what it is in the Deer. In the BX, the air intake is right here by your legs. So the cool air gets sucked in here and the hot air blown out the front. On the deer, it's like a traditional tractor where the cool air is taken in the front of the unit and the fan disperses the air behind it. And a lot of that goes on the user. At least in theory, you should stay cooler on this tractor because a lot of that hot air gets dispersed. Another potential advantage to this is when you're running a bush hog or in any other condition that you might have a real heavy grass with um, seeds and, and bush or whatever you might have, it, it covers over the 1025R uh, screen on the front. Now that might happen here. I've seen several BX commenters that have said it does indeed happen uh, on the BX as well. I don't really know. Uh, so again, I gotta leave that to you, the commenters and viewers, to let me know and, and let our fellow viewers know whether you prefer this reversed airflow or whether you prefer the traditional airflow. But it is a difference. Both of these units have extremely reliable engines. The Kubota engine is manufactured by Kubota and has been around a long time and has proven to be extremely reliable. The Deer engine is very similar. It's manufactured by Yanmar. Again, the Yanmar engine's unquestionably very reliable. I guess I have to leave this up to you. A lot of the Kubota fans make such a big deal about the engine being manufactured by the same company that builds the tractor. I don't really understand that to be a big deal. For instance, Deer's largest tractor, the Deer 9620, it has a Cummins engine in it. I would think that Cummins and Cat engines are incredibly reliable, just like a Yanmar engine. I, I don't really understand why that's a big deal. 
Um, but that is something that the Orange fanboys like to mention all the time. Overall, I think the powertrains in both of these units have been extremely reliable. We just don't see any reports or very few reports of issues with the powertrain. I, I would be quite comfortable with that. You know, come to think of it, I don't hear many issues of powertrain issues in any of the subcompact tractors. Uh, if there's any aspect of these subcompacts that's pretty reliable, it does seem to be the powertrain, and that's good news for all of us consumers. How about pricing? This is so difficult. Y you can do the build your own tool for either the Deer or the Kubota. Uh, you'll end up with an MSRP uh, with all the options that you choose. That's a very helpful tool for both sides. You can see what options are available. You can kind of see a relative cost. I highly recommend that. Having said that, neither of these costs, the MSRP prices, are going to be relevant. Both of these companies change their, their behind-the-scenes pricing quite frequently. They have different incentive plans depending on the time of year and a little bit on their own internal uh, market share findings. They, they know a lot more what's going on than what we might think they do in the marketplace. Now, I was able to get publicized pricing on the deer. Uh, deer dealers are allowed to publicize their prices, uh, special deals. I can just state clearly that in selected dealers all over the country, uh, we saw prices of $16,000 uh, for a 1025R, 120R loader, and 60D mower deck. That seems to be a price that you could get most any time. Uh, a couple of dealers that I talked to could do a little bit better than that um, in certain scenarios, right? So it's, it's, that's kind of the pricing I'm hearing. Now with the BX, in general, I believe it's gonna be a little bit less expensive than that. However, I could not get any dealer to go on record and say they would sell me a BX at X price and would allow me to say so on YouTube. So take that for what it is. You know, prices that I was quoted behind the scenes, I'm uncomfortable publicizing here because I did get a couple that said, don't put my name on it, but here's what I'll sell you one for. I just don't feel like that's a good way of doing business. So if you're a Kubota dealer and you want to put your name in the comments with a price, do so. We'll produce an update and even talk about this again. But overall, what we're seeing is maybe $800, maybe $1,000 cheaper for this unit than this unit. There's still caveats. There's several options that this unit doesn't have in that pricing. For instance, the Auto Connect deck was additional. Um, the lighting, another difference in these tractors, uh, this tractor has two more lights. I find that only two lights in the front is just insufficient, especially if you use your loader. In fact, I don't even like the two lights in front because you pick that loader up a little bit and you can't see anything but the loader glaring right back at you. Uh, so a difference that I'm mentioning there that's kind of unrelated to pricing, but in order to get some extra lighting, it's going to cost you more here. You get these two included with the deer. And then of course there's even more that you can buy add-on with, with each of them. As we've stated, you also need to add a bucket level indicator. It isn't a lot of money, but you just find a lot of these little options begin to, to add to the price on the BX that are included in the 1025R. Hate to go too far down that road, it becomes nitpicky. So let's just say that somewhere between $500 and $1,000 is the price difference in these units. You have to decide if the capability differences we've described over the last seven rounds is, a, is an appropriate value exchange for that $500 to $1,000 either way. You know what? We'll get to that in a minute, but that's your decision, not mine. Let's talk a little bit about the source of these machines. To my knowledge, this machine is entirely engineered in Japan by Kubota. They say that there's some assembly done in the USA. I would like to hear someone come on and say exactly how much assembly is done in the USA. Does this mean putting the loader on the tractor and putting the tires on? How much assembly is done? But overall, we believe that the engineering is all done uh, by Japanese engineers. Some portion of the tractor is delivered to the US and final assembly done here. It's hard for me to know much more detail, but I think we can say that much. 
So how about this machine? A lot of haters out there like to say, this is just a green Yanmar. The whole tractor's made by Yanmar. Deer didn't have anything to do with it. And you know what? Probably 15 years ago, that was true for all the compact tractors in the Deer lineup. As the market has grown and Deer has realized that this is a market they actually want to participate in, that's changed. Deer still uses the Yanmar engine, but I believe the full Yanmar tractor, the 2016 version of the 2025R and 2032R was the very last of the kind of pure Yanmar tractors. Starting several years ago with the new 3 Series and then the new 1 Series here and then the 2 Series, the engineering for the total machine here is done in the USA by US-based engineers who watch these videos and watch your comments uh, just like you're doing right now. But the engine comes from Japan, Yanmar plant. The hydrostatic transmission, I'm not sure, but I think parts of it come from India. I don't really know. I'd love to hear more about that. And the assembly of those pieces is done in the USA. The engine is mated to the rear end and the rest of the tractor put together here in the USA. Loaders, I believe, come from Mexico. I don't know where they come from in the BX. Um, that's about all I know about sourcing. One more point about sourcing. Does it really matter? Or is this just another way that we try to create division and, and controversy between these two uh, tractors and other tractors in the industry? I don't know. Obviously, I prefer to have something that is made in the West somewhere. You know what I mean by the West, in America or Europe. Um, but this is what we have. These are the choices that we have. And you make your own choice. Hello, deer. Hello. Deer. I have two deers. <laughs> this has been a long and winding road for us. It has. Um, over the, the duration of this, there's been some kind of general questions that have come up, and uh, we've tried to jot some of those questions down. More about our motivation and just kind of what's going on behind the scenes here a little bit, why, we, why we're doing things. So, Christy, let's get started on this. Yeah, I guess one of the first major questions that people have asked us is, why did you choose the Kubota and the John Deere and just focus on these two when there's quite a few other subcompacts on the market? Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, and we touched on this in the first episode. These are the two biggest sellers, right? Uh, a very large portion of the market uh, is held by these two units, the BX and the 1025R, the 1023E to some degree as well. Mm. But the Deer and the Kubota subcompacts are the bulk of the market. There's a reason for that. Both of these machines are very feature rich. They're, they're very attachable, right? It's right. easy to get the, uh, the loaders on and off. Uh, it's easy to get the backhoes on and off. Uh, the ergonomics and the just handling of the machines is, is superior. And the manufacturers uh, have been in this business for a long time. You, you feel like that you know you're, that they're committed and they're going to have parts. And overall, there's just a, a longer term commitment okay, to the so business. Okay, so longevity. Yeah. So these are the two premier brands. Yeah. And I suppose there's a, a subtle underlying point there. My opinion is stick with the, the big brands. These tractors are going to last a long time. So you don't want a Yugo? I don't want to own a Yugo. Right. I don't want to own a, a brand that simply doesn't exist uh, 20, years 20 years from now, from now. when I need a part that, that can't be I just dated found. myself. Yeah, you goes. For those of you that are young, it was a throwaway car. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> What's next? Okay, so one of the other questions is, why in the world did you actually do it in the first place? <laughs> yeah, well, you've probably seen me in the living room when I've been uh, watching on the TV some of the other... I, I have. Some of the other reviews, uh, for example, there's a few reviews of the one series by uh, very, very pro-deer 
enthusiast and there's a few reviews of the BX by very, very pro BX. I was scared for our TV. I thought you might throw something at both of them. Yeah, I mean, it's a good thing there wasn't a bricks handy. Yeah. We really felt like that there was not good informational, mm -hmm. honest reviews available for these tractors. Um, I felt like the deer ones were too biased towards deer and they and they left out subtle points right. just to make the tractor look better. I felt like the BX ones did the same thing. Right, so I, you kind of wanted to, as unbiased as we could be, to give something for people to look at who are maybe shopping for one of these two tractors and really want to know the differences in them. Exactly. Now there's no question we have bias. I mean, everyone right. has bias, but I don't believe bias has anything to do with your ability to be fair in your comparisons. Right. For instance, on the loader, when you show the loader unhook, you have to go through and unhook the hydraulic SCVs. Because if you ignore that on the deer, then you've cheated the BX of probably its best feature. Right, right, the single point yeah. connector. That was an example that, uh, that we saw on one of the, the deer episodes. It, I just didn't want to be like that. Hopefully this is, has shown that. Right, so what was your objective though? Did you have any path in mind or did you really just come out here and go, okay, this is the loader and that's the loader and what's similar and what's different? What, what, what was your hypothesis? Oh, it was just that, this is a loader and that's a loader. No, <laughs> no, it was information. Uh, we get comments uh, from interested and passionate viewers who really just need to know and want to understand some of these differences. We felt right. like we could illustrate them visually. Uh, in many cases, the specs are right there on the page, but those specs are just numbers on the page. It's not until you try to see uh, both of these tractors picking up a pallet and putting it on a trailer do you realize, oh my goodness. There's a difference. There really is a difference, yeah. and that difference is is in, in weights that are relevant to me. Right. You right. know, it's one thing if you say it's 2,000 pounds or 1,800 pounds, but when you get down to it won't lift an appliance or maybe an, an item that I would routinely need to get in and out of the back of my pickup truck. Like my new oven. I have on yet. the oven. Okay. <laughs> but the Kubota only lifted what, 320 pounds and this lifted 600? Yeah, about, it was a little, it was a little over 500. A little over Understand 500. that was out extended on the forks. It was not right next to the back, so that's why the specs are a little bit different than that. It's because it was a good ways out there. Again, go back and check out that round. I believe it was round three or four. I don't remember. I just think either one of them will pick up my new oven. There you go. If the commenters, if you think I should get a new oven, let me know. I wish I was the editor, because I'd chop that out. No, 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 no. What's the next question? What did you consider to be a successful outcome? Okay, that's a good one because a lot of folks would say, oh, you're so biased, you just wanted people to buy the deer. No, that really is not it. If after watching our videos you say, you know what, I recognize that the BX loader has some limitations. I recognize that you know it may not be able to lift quite as much, but I really love my Kubota dealer. It's closer, all these items, and the $500 to $1,000 cheaper that it is, is worthwhile to me. Or maybe it's more than a $500 to $1,000 for you. Right. But at the end of this, if you said, I recognize the difference in capabilities, but the BX is still the best tractor for me, great. Enjoy it. Right, You're going to love yeah. it. Another successful outcome. Let's say it's a similar situation. You really love your Kubota dealer. Um, but you see that, gee, this guy may not have quite enough capability. And you've decided to upgrade to the B series, maybe the 2601 or maybe the B2650. And you've said, I really need that extra size to be able to lift what I need to lift. That's an incredibly successful outcome. Right. You've got the information at your fingertips now to really make a wise choice. Yeah. And it, likewise, if you say, well, now at least I understand why there's a $500 or a $1,000 difference. It's not simply green paint over here. That's a successful outcome as well. Look, it doesn't really matter to me. No. Nope. But I just want information out there for the viewers. That's what we're here for. Right. That's what, what we didn't find when we were looking for a tractor. Because right. you looked at a lot of different tractors before we bought. Yeah. It was five really years hard. Ago. Really hard. Okay, yeah. what's next? Let's see. 
Are you going to do any more detailed comparisons? You know, when we started this. We're tired. Yeah. When we started this, it was a lot of fun for a while. Um, during the first couple of weeks of this, when we were discovering some of these differences, some of them were real surprises to us. Uh, the right. three-point hitch being so powerful on the BX as compared to the deer, they're rated, I think, one pound differently. I think that's and, what we And have. seeing that much difference was amazing. The next week or a couple weeks later, we saw that the BX did not turn nearly as short as the John Deere. They're only rated one-tenth of a foot difference. Well, I don't know if they measure it differently or what, but you can see from our episode that the BX doesn't turn nearly as short. That was a surprise to us. Right. Anytime we saw these surprises, it was a lot of fun. Now, it got to where it wasn't fun at all when we just had to deal with so many hater comments. Um, yeah. And that, and that really began to wear on me, and it made it very stressful. I, I had to measure my words and my tone at every turn, I don't want to be unfair, um, and yet it was just it was just very difficult. Yeah, and I wish people knew our personalities because we're not we're not going to lie about something or try to misrepresent something. We really just wanted more information yeah. out there. So we probably won't do any more direct comparisons in the near term. Um, who knows what the future holds? We may end up being the consumer reports of tractors and do comparisons every single week. But for right now, we're going to take a break from that. That kind of leads us to something else because so many hater comments were, oh, you're just very biased towards the deer. So from this, are you just trying to say that deer is better? No, and you know, I think broadly, is deer better than Kubota or is Kubota better than deer? Not at all. We're making a conclusion about the capabilities of these two particular tractors. Right. Right. Just a BX and a 1025R. Right. Right. And uh, fo some folks have said, well, you shouldn't have chosen the BX. You should have chosen a B. Okay. Many people in the world want to know how these two compare because they view them as similar tractors. Right. Whether that's the direct comparison or not in your mind, okay. That may have proven that we, you know, back to successful point number one, if you realize that this is not as capable as the 1025R, then it was successful. But no, we cannot make any extrapolations about one company over another based on two tractors. Right. You know, there's some features of uh, the larger tractors in the Kubota line that I really, really like. So even though, personally, I think the 1025R is a superior machine to this, okay, I said it, the features of some of the larger tractors, like the HST transmission in the Grand L series. That's pretty good, pretty it good is, stuff. It is, yeah, yeah. We looked at some at the last farm show we went yeah. to. It was pretty nice. Pretty nice. I guess the last questions are, are there any more tests that you're gonna do? Um, I think we're done. Uh, I did a little bit of testing where I hooked both of these units to the Johnny 5, and I have a load center. Uh, essentially, it'll measure weight, measure how hard we're pulling. Those tests turned out to be essentially identical, um, so I don't really see any point in publishing that. It was, both tractors were identical. What I did in that test, just to provide you a little more information, I put enough weight on the front of both of the machines and on a heavy hitch on the back, such that there was no way they would spin their wheels. Okay. Okay, kind of artificially saying, look, I want this thing not to spin at all, and I want to see how much the transmission will allow it to pull. It was identical. So we're going to kind of skip showing that because I think everyone is tired of the comparisons at this point. Yeah. How about the curl test? You mentioned that one time, but we didn't do it. Just I, decided to skip that one too. I did. I think it just kind of ran out of steam. You can look at the bucket curl uh, specs in online and you can see the magnitude of differences. I suppose the one thing there is, is just like the boom breakout force, which was 1,320 pounds here on the spec, 900 pounds here, that's almost identical to what we saw on the machines. It just doesn't seem like that big of a deal when you read it on the page. Right, right. It, it just seems but like a... when you see it, yeah. there's something about visually seeing something that's very different. So if you're going to go through those specs, make sure you really think, okay, that, that probably is a difference, you know, and, right. and really think it through. Okay. It's getting dark. It is getting dark, and the bugs are biting. They're not biting me. You must be sweeter. I am. 
Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this comparison. I really don't know what else to say. We've done our best, much less than perfect, I'm sure. Um, but this is, it's been fun to me, but stressful. Hey, thanks for watching the entire series. If you haven't seen the entire series, go back through them. There are eight rounds. You can also go to our website, tractortimewithtim.com. We have a special section set up for all of the BX versus one series comparisons. Hopefully it'll kind of be with us for a long time. Um, you know, my luck, both manufacturers will totally change these machines next year. Let's hope not. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time, time with Tim. Tim. I'm afraid all our viewers already took a nap. <laughs> you know, we do have some viewers that say, I watch you when I'm wanting to go to bed. When I'm wanting to go to bed, yes. Should I, like, it's be excited? It's more wives that say that when their husbands bring their laptops or their iPhones or their iPads to bed. So we put the wife to sleep. Yep.